six wounded by Israeli attacks. Well, the fight for the soul of um, Rafa is on, where South Africa claims is the, perhaps the only place Palestinians can rebuild uh, to salvage what is left of that nation. Global Affairs Analyst Tejiko Okwa joins me live from Texas to discuss the latest developments on the war. Mr. Okwa, thank you for joining us on The World Now. South Africa's application to the ICJ accuses Israel of carrying out genocidal operations in Rafa and other places in Gaza. It's now saying that it must be ordered to stop. What do you think are the chances that an intervention by the UN court can significantly alter how Israel executes this war? Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, historically, the court, the ICJ, has, is only a resolution passing, making body. It have no powers. It cannot enforce its, its own rules. Everybody ignores it. You know, nations go over there to have their 15, 10 minutes or whatever. You know, time or fame. At the end of the day, it's water under the bridge. Nobody cares. You know, what they say is not going to persuade Israel, and what they say is not going to persuade America from giving Israel arms. So, they, you know, that just tells you the structure of the world. We have these organizations that oftentimes developing countries run to thinking that by going there, they're going to get this done. I mean, since 1940-something that these institutions were formed, where have they successfully you know, seeing peace, you know, uh, 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 you know, peace exists because of their effort, not none. You know, you look at what is going on in uh, between Congo and, and Rwanda, you know, they have UN peacekeeping force. Why don't you have UN peacekeeping force in Israel and Palestine? Because Israel said no, and America don't want them. So, you know, we, so, so that shows you the dichotomy and the preference treatment that nations get over other nations. So, I, you know, I applaud South Africa for what it is they are doing, but it's a waste of time. It's not going to do anything. The war is going to go on. It has been going on for two years. People are dying. And then we have been doing all these talks, you know. So it's, it's a shame of all of us, both leaders and the land, you know, given the situation we found ourselves in the world. You know, it's ego. It drives a lot of this conflict, and then people die in the process. I'm sure you've heard Israel's defense uh, that the offensive in Rafa is necessary to destroy the last remaining Hamas battalions that are based there, and also to rescue some 130 remaining Israeli hostages, uh, which it believes are being held there. Are there tangible options to Israel's onslaught that wouldn't jeopardize the over one million people taking refuge? In Rafa? Well, I mean, look the ratio uh, uh, for 130 something million hostages. I'm not saying holding them is justified, but just it's justified in the mind of those who are holding them. Is is reason to destroy the life of two, two point something million uh, two point something million people. You know, it was the rationale behind it. So that this also tells you that the human spirit is highly insurmountable, you know, because, you know, with all the Israeli military and might and power and intelligence, they still have not been able in, hundred, in uh, more than two years to find where these 100 and uh, 30 something hostages are. So, yeah, you go in there and leveling is not going to happen. The more they do it, you know, the more, you know, resilient and pushback they're going to get from, you know, Palestinians and those who sympathize with Palestinian causes. You see, when you look at the war, the Western worlds have held with, you know, uh, with non-Western world, you know, over there, they, they go in and they, they succeed. But, you know, when he was the world war, the, the Europeans were easily subdued by other Europeans, you know. And they, they are quiesced, you know, they are agreed to settle and, and, you know, stop the war. But when they start taking wars to unde uh, uh, undeveloped countries, they mm. always have difficulty. You see what happened in Iran, you see what happened in Afghanistan. They haven't been able, they think by showing up with their power and their, and their gun, they're going to kill the human spirit. The human spirit is one thing that is hard to destroy. It may, it may cause a lot of death. But people resist the West, and they are resisting them. And the West, because of their own ego, haven't come to terms on the current situation in the world, how to recognize the right of everybody else, whether you are developed or not developed. You can't just go into people's homeland and try to dictate to them how to live. They're going to push back. You know, your airplanes and your war and your bombs ain't going to, you know, ain't going to shut them up. Well, some so would say... Again, I'm hoping that... 
It did. Some would say it's actually more complex okay. than that because we're looking at a rich history of, um, you know, over almost a century now of, of what's happened in, in that part of the Middle East. But the U.S. says that Israel may have violated international law using American weapons, uh, but it also says in the same breath that there wasn't enough evidence to halt future military aid. It doesn't look like we would witness a significant reduction in American aid for Israel anytime soon, right? Well, again, you know, you know the relationship, yeah, you know, if without America, Israel would not be existing where they are. So, you know, there's this attachment, you know, uh, America has Israel, every political figure that is worth anything, say so we are behind Israel. I, I, and then recognize this is an election year. This is a presidential election year. So all eyes are on the candidates to see what it is they are saying, whether they are favoring Israel or being, you know, just, you know anti, anti-Semitic thing mm. that, you know, anytime you oppose an, a Jewish person, you know, they're just going to throw that at you and will be tied you if you can survive it because they have the media. And they know how to make their own issues look more appealing than the issues of other people. I mean, you know, there are Jews, there are other people in the world, they all have any issues, but the, the, the Jews have managed to let the whole world know, you know, we are on top of the pile. So whatever is affecting us, you know, has to get more attention. And, and, and people sh should start to speak up because that's not the case. You know, I don't subscribe to the idea those who read the Bible and subscribe to it, that the, the Jews are the chosen one. Everybody that God created is a chosen one. So there shouldn't be any preferential treatment for anybody. Let's just have a just way to live and respect the right of other people to live. Global Affairs Analyst, Eddie Kokwa, thank you so much for talking to us. Thank you for having me.